Hello everyone, welcome to my primary winter forecast um, by me, Matthew Benz, here to talk about what I think is going to happen this winter. Not for certain, but this is just my primary thoughts again. Next um, next forecast is going to be sometime in November, so yep, here we go into my preliminary, preliminary winter forecast. So this winter I am forecasting a La Nina to set up this winter. Um, again, you can see that cold pool of water in here that will tell me um, cold temperatures likely to happen. Um, I wouldn't be surprised to see um, to see anything different than that. Um, I think it is a very cold Enzo to a wee La Nina this winter, and as you can see, it says it, it has it right here. So this is what a typical La Nina pattern looks like. Um, has cold temperatures up here, and just polar is going to come down. Cold temperatures over here. Wet temperatures in this area right here. Wet conditions, sorry, in this area right here. And there would be a lot of supply of cold up in the north. So this is your typical on the pattern out. I'm not going to say it's going to be the same this year, because I don't think it's going to be. Um, last winter was a very weak La Nina, and it was very cold. I mean, not it was very warm. The beginning is in December was cold, but then the rest of it was warm. Um, I'm going to tell you why that is in a little bit and why it could be a risk heading to this winter, but I don't think it's going to be the biggest threat this winter. So, again, I'm not expecting this winter to be that warm at all. So, to compare, so comparing, um, sorry about that. So, comparing, comparing each winter, um, 2007 was a very strong analog. To what the sea temperatures are, sea, ter sea surface temperatures are right now. As you can see, um, there's a lot of sea surface. There's a lot of um, there's a lot of similarities between 2007 and 2017, and also 1995 and 2017. Um, these are just the two analog winters I see that I'm going to compare to in this video for analogs and what it, it looks like for this winter. And this is and this is the 500 millibar height during these two winters. Again. A lot of cold air up here. A lot of cold air that could be able to come down in these two winters. It's still be determined, but I won't be surprised to see that at all. So here, those are my two analog years. Again, let's see what they did in terms of the cold and snow and what they brought to the United States for both of those winters. I don't. We'll see what they do, but let's, let's be ready for some maybe some cold temperatures. So this was 27. This is this is the two analog years I'm picking up on right now. And there's a lot. There's a large swath of cold across the north entire U.S. and warmth across the southern U.S. Again, this coming up. This could be a, a, a huge part in this winter forecast. Honestly, it would be the cold temperatures up here and warm temperatures down here. Again, that's just a, what I'm thinking is going to happen, and it might not happen like this, but it's it's in the tables. Um, this is what the this is what 2007 2008 winter brought for. For um, the winter, and there's above average precip across much of the central, southern, central Kansas, Missouri, Illinois, Indiana, and stretching. So that's gonna be an average storm track to watch. Again, you got a southeast ridge in there with the La Nina. That's typically what happens early in the southeast ridge. But again, very active across much of Kansas, Missouri, and heading up that. So that's gonna be an average storm track that we're gonna have to watch out for for this winter. Um, is, is there gonna be cold with that? Who knows. Still a long way far out. Um, again, back half winter this year. Um, these really, these years really showed a lot of cold and snow in January through February, and I show you what I mean right now. Um, yeah, look at this cold through much for much of the United States in January, March, January, February, and March. I mean, it's it's just, just widespread cold. Okay, widespread cold across, and then, I mean this is this would tell me that upper trough becomes very amplified during this year, so I think December might be a little bit warmer and warmer than January through March. I think January through March is going to be very active and very cold, according to this um, according to this model run. According to these analogs and all the models I'm looking at is showing cold in the back half of winter. So we'll see what this year brings, but I'm expecting a back half winter again. I think it's going to be warmer in November and December, switching halfway probably December and I'm gonna watch out for Christmas, okay? The reason I'm watching out for Christmas is
because this is when the transition period is going to be strongest. And when you get that transition period, there's going to be a huge, there has to be a huge storm to create that cold. Okay, and between the warm and the cold, that's where your big storms form. So whatever that is at, there's a my, a my possibility that there's going to be a big winter storm probably. I'm going to guess by the 20th of December. Again, I'm not going to be a totally um, saying this was going to happen, but back half winter, cold, very cold temperatures by Christmas. I'm going to guess, and we'll see what happens through there. But just watch out for the back half winter. Again. Um, Another threat that could happen between these two winters that happened was a, a very strong southeast ridge. This could be a big factor in this winter because a southeast ridge can bring a lot of heat across much of the southern and eastern United States. I think it's going to remain cold in the central part, but in the eastern, you're going to have to guess, and this is a risk you're going to have to watch out for, it is a huge southeast ridge that could take shape and bring a lot of warm air across much of the eastern, eastern, eastern United States. So we're going to watch out, out for for that eastern United States, okay, that's just a threat, it's, it's just a threat, um, and so here is the Jamstack model for December, and I honestly, I believe this model is, is pretty spot on right now, showing a lot of cold up in northern plains, and Kansas, and Iowa, and yeah, there's your, and there's your heat, southeast ridge, again, a lot of people are telling me that, a lot of people are hyping up the northeast being cold, it's going to be average, okay, for me, for right now, we're looking at everything else, Again, I, there is there is warm risk. Okay, I'm not gonna say there's not. There's cold and warm risk up there. I do think the cold is more persistent in the northern plains, and also there's your active storm track. Again, same anal analog showed that. It showed us again. A lot of winter storms could be happening in parts of Kansas, um, Missouri, Iowa, and Illinois. That's just part of the deal right now. I think this is nice to be area to watch for a lot of snowstorms to form this this winter. So there was Jan's model. I, I again, I told you guys I really agree with this model. Uh, very cold and active pattern, likely to show up in the winter, starting prior in the end of December through much of the early part of March. And then, okay, so so with all of that, with all that considered, here's the graphics where I think will happen this winter. These aren't the best of graphics, and like you guys know that right now, but they're pretty accurate. I think um, they're they're okay, but this is what I think is happening this winter. Very, very, I'm going to say is a very cool air mass across much of the northwest, northern plains, Kansas, and into Iowa and parts of Illinois. Um, again, this is where I think the troughs will be strongest, where it's going to beat the most at. I think it's where the, most of the Arctic air is going to be at. Is up in Kansas and points northward. Uh, I think there's going to be a little ridge of high pressure across much of the southwest and the southeast ridge I think across much of the southeast and I only, the reason I didn't do, didn't do warmth or cold up here is because these are just uncertain of areas I don't know what's going to happen yet and again my analyze tell me warm across the south cold across the north I just don't know how far this cold is going to go I don't know how far this warm is going to go so that was that's why I'm doing um, this the, cold, the warm down here and again above average precip in this area is up in here I think there's going to be a lot above average snowstorms, a lot of snowstorms probably possible, and even some severe weather across some of these areas where the warmth and cold meets up. So that's going to keep an eye on. I'm not going to go in whole depth of what the snowfall is going to be like yet. That will be safe for my winter forecast, official winter forecast. And again, so here's a risk for this year. Um, strong Pacific jet. Um, this was an issue last year, and it brought us record heat across most of the conus. Um, Hopefully the Pacific Jet is a weak support jet can take over, bring that cold air down to the United States. It gives that active storm track. And if, if the support jet is strong, and we also get a, a nice little Pacific Jet too, that would mean a lot of snowstorms. So just letting you guys know that right now. Um, strong south, south Southeast Ridge. Again, these are the South La Nina patterns. And I won't be surprised if it happened again. Uh, what what it does to the United States, again, um, Cross the aisle, I'll show you on the next slide. I already showed you what it looked like. And again, strong polar vortex. Again, it's a polar vortex is strong. And the troughs and the cold, it, it stays up in Canada. But if it's weak, again, if it's weak, it gets it gets pushed down in the United States because of the forcing, um, because of the forcing up in uh, high latitude blocking. Hopefully we get the high latitude blocking, a weak, a weak polar, polar vortex, that strong cold can come down to the United States. Um, I do expect this year to be cold across much of the central and northern United States. 
also very snowy across high plains in the Midwest. A lot of car loads developing. I think this is where going to be where you're going to get your a uh, lot of storm system develop is in Colorado. And again, this is just a preliminary one for you guys. It can always change, but this is just my early thoughts. And I think I hope everyone enjoyed this winter forecast and. I hope everyone enjoys this this winter forecast. Um, I sure did. Um, again, this is again this is just my preliminary early. This is just my early thoughts on winter. Um, and again, see. So yeah, I hope you guys really enjoyed that. Um, I did particularly. I enjoyed that a lot. Um, so there you go. Also, guys, go check out my Twitter. Um, I, I post a lot about winter, a lot about what's going to happen this winter. Um, again, I need to get more followers, but again, there, there you go, guys. My, here's my Twitter. Go check it out. Again, I post a lot about winter, and that's really awesome. Hope you guys enjoyed this preliminary winter forecast. I certainly did. and I hope